Can you hear me? <laughs> hey, everybody, it's Nick. Hola, Nick! Just wanted to take a few minutes to let you fine folks know how you can contact us. You can find us on Twitter at the It's Too Wordy One and on Instagram. Just look for It's Too Wordy. We also have a Discord set up, The Haunted Log. If you like what you hear, maybe considering throwing us some of your spare change. Maybe some of your hard earned loot. Maybe some stuff you find in your car cushions. Who knows? Anything will go a long way. And you can do that by visiting our Patreon page at Patreon backslash House BTS. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed this episode. This week on It's Too Wordy, Heroes in a Half Show. Welcome everybody to this week's episode of It's Too Wordy, a comic book podcast where three, or maybe four buddies, discuss comic books from their childhood and today. I'm Kirk. I'm Ryan. I'm Landon. And I'm Nick. Landon's back! Yay! Whoop whoop! How we doing this week, guys? Good. Good. Awesome, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing a lot better than last week. Good, you read something this week? I read a lot this week. Good. <laughs> I'm making up for last week. So this week we're going to be talking about Excalibur number one. And then we did something a little different this time. We are all going to talk about a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic book at random. We didn't pick one for everybody to read. So let's get started. Do we want to start with Excalibur? Yeah. All right. What do we think? Hmm. Am I the only one who's going to be in the minority here? Maybe. I probably am. You liked it? I liked it. I thought it was good. I liked it better than X-Men number one. <laughs> I'm sure. No, I I like the fact that they brought Morgan Le Fay back. Mm-hmm. And that it's a, a, a sorcery kind of story. The thing I didn't like is how they treated Brian Braddock. Okay. He's got so much history in Marvel Universe that they kind of just pissed on him. To make Brett, Betsy... Betsy... Captain, Captain Britain. Britain. It is going to be interesting to see how he gets the amulet back. Yes. And how she saves him, but... It had one big factor for me, is it had Camelot and King Arthur, so I was sold the minute I read it. Yeah. That was the only reason why I liked it, because I want to see where it's going to go. Yeah. No, I, I just, I was reading it, I'm, I'm kind of glad that Betsy got her body back, and now Psylocke can go do her own thing. Yeah. But, okay, so on the cover of the book, it looks like she still has Psylocke's psychic knife. That's Cyclo- Psylocke's. Yes. Powers. That's not Betsy's. That's not Betsy's, no. So, they got that wrong. I took it to be, like, the sword and the stone. I'm kind of glad that she got the amulet, like Brian did, and not picked up Excalibur, but, I don't know. I'm not quite crazy about the team that they put together for this. Where's Richter? Where's Nightcrawler? Nightcrawler's not... He's in a different book. I know, but it's Excalibur. It is Excalibur. I get what you're saying. It's Kitty Pride should be in this one, then. Megan or, showed up. Megan was in here. Where's Maggot? Or Morrow? They're coming. Don't worry, right? You keep telling me that. I keep reading these damn things, and they're horrible. <laughs> you said you liked it, Landon? What'd you like about it? Well, here's the thing. I've never been a big X-Men guy. I just didn't get Shocker cool. with your dad? What? No, no kidding. <laughs> I had no, no really. influence on this Yeah, whatsoever. okay. I feel sorry for you, kid. I just didn't get the whole mutant thing. This changed that. I actually enjoyed this book fairly good. Fairly well. Fairly yes. well. Yes. Fairly well. There yeah. you go, buddy. Okay, last page. Her sword is pink. So that's Psylocke's psychic knife. <sighs> Maybe they're just trying to show that it's about, a feminine side. How no. About, how about we let, how about we like try to let the story build? How about we get Apocalypse out of here? I agree. Don't call him Apocalypse. His, oh, he's his, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We both thought the same thing. That's what's funny. <laughs> This one, the Marauders, that's, that was last week, right? Yeah. Marauders. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Okay. I will probably pick up the next issue. It. Excalibur? Mm, probably not. I I don't know. I I like Captain Britain. They were Brian Braddock. I didn't like what they did with him. I, I have a very hard time seeing past Apocalypse being a bad guy, which he could still be in this, but you never where know. they're getting together singing Kumbaya. Not... This is just the beginning, so... When did Jubilee have a kid? A while ago. Isn't she still a vampire? 
She's still a vampire. See, I think that's where my big problem was, is I'm reading this, and I'm like, okay, where's Psylocke? When did Jubilee have a kid? Jubilee had Why a... is Apocalypse a good guy? <laughs> because all mutants are welcome on Krakoa. If so, you read House of X and Powers of Ten, you would know that. I understand that. But I also think it's too much to ask somebody to read that. You're doing a number one. Even give a little synopsis of I this agree. is what happened. To... I agree. So I understood. If you're, yeah. you know. His first, Landon's first time into the X-Men. Yeah. Not, again, I didn't do that. I've been buying them X-Men books. Mm-hmm. Every true believer, X-Men book. Um, true. Yeah. But I had nothing to go on getting into I this. I agree. And it confused me a lot. And it really lost me immediately out the gate just because of that. The, that's I think that's going to be the problem with all these X-Books is that they're going to base the assumption that everyone read that 12 story arc right. and not everybody did and i don't blame anybody for being upset that they don't know what the hell's going on and why is apocalypse a good guy yeah yeah that that's my biggest beef with it the apoc i don't understand the apocalypse thing either or sorry uh, yeah, get it right <laughs> like i said it just had had a few things that piqued my interest the camelot Mm-hmm. And I know I don't like a lot of magic stuff, but it deals with that old Merlin type, sure, old type book, and I think that's why it piqued my interest. And Betsy Braddock is one of my favorites, even when she's without Quanon, who is Psylocke. But yeah, I'm still trying to decide if I'm going to buy the the second one or not, if it's worth the money, because there's just so much coming out and i want to pick the best one and stick with it i don't want to buy all of them because that'll get expensive yeah Mm -hmm. so i'm gonna rate it about a three and a half landon i'm gonna go three and a half too nick like i said i like the mystic part don't like what they did with brian didn't really explain how she got her body back that was a big one too i didn't understand that either jane fonda workouts is it because right is it because of the eggs at the beginning when they they split the two and a half they brought something they brought jamie braddock back they so did. that's pretty cool. And he was taking a bath in the, in the egg. In the egg. And egg's like, we need to get him out of here. Okay, did anybody else want Howard to step out of one of those eggs? I mean, he showed up from in an egg when he came to Earth. I mean, I didn't think that would have been fantastic. I didn't think of that, but that would have been awesome. <laughs> uh, two. Two? Okay. I was going to say two and a half. Okay. Yep. All right. So, moving on to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Land and Go. All right. <laughs> so, I did Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Urban Legends number one. My first take on this was, man, this is really dark for a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But I remember not everything is the cartoon or the current stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep, <laughs> that's pretty good. These cyborg guys are attacking the turtles. Uh, it's the turtles' 18th birthday. And so, basically, they're just fighting these cyborgs in the lair. And then earlier, I think it was Don, yeah, Donatello got shot by these cyborg dudes. So then they kidnap Donatello. Then they're in a chopper over the ocean with the, where Donatello's with, is, (sighs) Donatello is in the helicopter with the cyborg guys. And... He escapes, crash out of the helicopter, they're falling towards the ocean, and it cuts back to the turtles, which are currently working on a killed cyborg, and then basically self-destructs in Ralph's face, have his face gets melted off, and then it kills the Raphael's face melts off? Yes. Like, really? <laughs> oh, that's, that's something. That's gonna, yeah. leave, that's gonna, <laughs> that's gonna leave a mark. Mm-hmm. So, um, now they're just laying... On the beach, and all of a sudden, Donnie gets a vision of Master Splinter, and then he's saying everything like, bye and stuff, and it just stops, and then last words are just Donnie saying, he's gone. So, yeah. Wow. Splinter's gone? Apparently. I don't know where this falls on the timeline, I just, I'm like, here's a turtle book, read it. (laughs) Um, because in my book, Splinter's alive. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what happened. I'm as confused as you guys. <laughs> well, this, but this is Urban Legend, so it could oh, that's be... Urban Legend, okay. So, okay. what would you rate it then, bud? Uh, I gotta give it a 
three. Okay, what did you like about it? I like the action. I'm into like action-y type of stuff, so yeah, okay. that was pretty good. What did you dislike about it? How violent it was. <laughs> just a kid who doesn't like violence. I don't know, just Donnie it, getting shot in like the first three seconds of the book. Raphael's and face melting. That too. <laughs> that would traumatize me a little yeah, bit. It could just yeah. be a little over the top. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Not just your standard Ninja Turtle yeah. fight. No, not at all. all right. So yeah, that's my book. <laughs> Good deal. Cool. All right. So I did a more recent book. I did Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 95, which is City at War number part three. This book is significant because it is the first appearance of a brand new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. You opened it? Oh, my God. I see the crease on the spine already. I didn't didn't realize that that was what was happening when I bought the book. (laughs) I was like... Oh, wow, I just bought a first appearance of a new character. Cover bent, or the uh, corner's cre- uh, oh, bent. Geez. Oh, well, I wasn't going to sell it anyway. <laughs> It'll never be near me. Um, so what happened in the previous issue is, her name is Jenny. She's the leader, of, quasi-leader of the Foot Clan with Splinter. She's like Splinter's right-hand person. Because in this timeline, Splinter is running the Foot, and... Shredder's granddaughter is trying to take over the Foot Clan, and she lures Jenny to, it's a detente kind of thing, a peace talk, under false pretenses, and she runs Jenny through with her sword, and Casey Jones, and I think it was Raphael, no, Donatello, are rushing her to the lab, and they're trying to figure out a way to save her because her wound is fatal. So they bring Mutagen in because they had some i guess they stole it or it was in a lab somewhere and they hook it up and donatello it's not working and donatello takes the iv to give her a blood transfusion with his own blood the mutagens in his blood and it turns her into a turtle so she's she hulk then i guess she's she hulk now (laughs) i really dug it yeah i just haven't bought the rest of them I think they did this because it... No, I don't think it was because they needed a female. I think it was just time to introduce a new character. And she's been like the right hand to Splinter for a while. So they just decided it was going to be her that was going to turn into the turtle. I'd give it a four. You have to actually read the other two parts for it to make sense. It's kind of the middle. But it's a really good book. And I got really excited when I found out it was the first appearance of a new character. So I'd highly recommend picking it up and giving it a read through the whole story if you can find it if you can find it because <laughs> those speculators man no well, that's what i got cool not cool. bad for doing it all off of memory no pretty good <laughs> awesome i'm probably doing the oldest in the timeline so this is donatello number one in a one issue micro series it's from 1986 nice so original tna tmnt Right. Raphael is taking a shower and he's like, oh my God, we're out of hot water. Donatello, go fix this. And April's like, you know what? Just go down there. He's going to complain more. Just go down, fix it while you can. Um, There's a guy downstairs living in the basement. Just so you know, uh, hide, right? So Donatello goes down to the basement and he gets attacked by this giant 1960s Jack Kirby style monster. And the monster goes and flies in through the wall and out through it. Like it's a solid wall. It just evaporates through it. And he's like, what the hell's going on here? So he goes and he finds this kid's place. He looks around. He gets caught by this kid. And he's like, wait a minute, I never drew you. He's like, what do you mean you never drew me? He's like, oh, you're real? Yeah, I'm real. And they become really good friends. This guy's name is Kirby. So it's a it's a it's an homage to Jack Kirby. To Jack Kirby. Awesome. And this guy found a meteorite or a crystal that allows and he has it taped to a pen. So anything he draws will come to life. The only thing that's never gone away is a portal that he drew. And Donnie's like, eh, let's go through it. (laughs) So he goes through and he picks his head back. He's like, you got to come here. You got to come out here, right? Kirby follows him. There's a war going on between all the stuff he drew and the inhabitants of this world. So Donnie and Kirby start thinking of new ideas to fight these monsters. Once everything's done, they're like, you guys are welcome here anytime. The portal starts to close. Donnie jumps through. Tries to get Kirby back out, but Kirby gets stuck. So Kirby's stuck in this universe. And that's pretty much it. It's a good little one-issue series. 
crazy thing is, I was watching The Good Place, and they're doing Pictionary, and the drawing that he's doing comes to life. It pops out of the page, and it comes to life, and it starts attacking them, and I'm like, oh my god. That's synchronicity right there. Like, I'm reading this book about stuff that somebody drew that comes to life, and we're watching a show, show about, about something that they drew when it comes to life. Nice. I was like, what? <laughs> huh. So, might be a little hard to find, but if you can go out and find it, it's really cool. All right. So, I did a Dreamwave book. There's only seven or eight issues, and this is my introduction to the Turtles. I knew who the Turtles were. Cartoon action figures, trading cards. Never read a turtle book because I didn't care. But uh, when I saw Dreamwave was doing it way back when, I'm like, oh, I'm going to check it out. And um, this one was the beginning of a new storyline, so that I got excited about that. And you only see one turtle. It is Leonardo, and there's this kid who knows Kung Fu and has a black belt. But when he needs to execute it and use it, he kind of freezes up. So Sunspot. April introduces him to Leonardo and Leonardo starts teaching him how to defend himself and to, if you say it, you got to say it. So you believe it. And if you believe it, you can do it. And the kid ends up going back and kicking the bullies butts and saving the girl and the girls all swooning over him and all that jazz. And the gang that he kicked their butts of, Ran off and goes, well, if he can beat us, then he should be a part of our gang. Otherwise, he's dead. And that's how the book ended. I love this take of the Turtles. The art style is just fantastic. It still it's that cartoony feel, but it's not like what Nickelodeon's doing now kind of thing. It's just a fun story. Yeah, I can't tell you. To, I mean, I'd tell you to go out and get this if you can find them. They're kind of hard to find. I tried to look into it. I'm missing two issues and I can't find them. Definitely, if you stumble across it, check it out. That's uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by Dreamwave. And I'd say this is probably a four. Okay, awesome. Now we're going to move on to our D-list character this week. And who would that be, Mr. Ryan? Baxter Stockman. The one from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the Intermensional Wrestling Federation? What, the ref? Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he was first introduced in the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles run in issue number two. Was created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Lard. Uh, So he was a scientist who developed Mousers with the help of his computer programmer, April O'Neill. April found he was using the Mousers to rob banks. And so Stockman sent the Mousers after her, but she was saved by the Turtles. In a later appearance, he came back as a cyborg, but his body was electrocuted and he was a destroyed assumed destroyed at that point donatello kept a very nasty secret by keeping the cyborg body (laughs) and not telling the other turtles and when these mites things electromites or whatever were attacking april and they were trying to kill her he destroyed the cyborg body as kind of retribution of april and that was the last stockman was ever seen in comic world and he was a fly on the cartoon yeah, yep. yeah, I was going to make some kind of a fly joke there, but uh, he was pretty fly for a white guy. Oh. Ooh. Wasn't he black? <laughs> he, was he was black. black. Was he? Yeah. yeah. In the cartoon, he was white, wasn't he? Yeah. In the, <laughs> wor- the cartoon, he was white, but <laughs> yeah. in the comic book, he's black. So it does work. Yeah. But, yeah. But in the comic book, he's black and white. I mean, yeah, you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if you guys didn't hear last week, we have officially gotten a sponsor. Krypton Comics has decided to pick up our little show and be our little sponsor. Um, it's the biggest comic shop in Omaha. Do you know where they're going to be this this weekend or what they're doing this weekend, Ryan? Um, this weekend, I don't think they had anything going on. Um, I know on November 30th, they are doing a mini-con with the last Starfighters group coming in. And so there's going to be some artists there. Do willing to do sketches and stuff and Paranormal Dads podcast and a few others to check out. That's about it for right where I got for now. So if you're listening and you're in town, go ahead and stop on in and tell them that uh, you heard about them on our show. And if you're in, in from out of town, look them up and go in and say hi. Well, I'll tell you right now, I don't care what Mickey Mouse says. It is the most magical place on earth. <laughs> 
now it's time for everybody's favorite segment, the Random Read. I'll go first this week because I got kind of a lot. So I was assigned last week to read a random read from Ryan and just like I was in high school, I refused to do my home. No, just kidding. I wasn't feeling well. <laughs> so he gave me the many deaths of the Batman to read and Batman Year Three. I don't want to give away too much. It's by John Byrne. The first comic, I was like, oh, this is cake. I hope the rest of this book, this series is like that because there's absolutely only two words in the whole dang comic book. And I will say that... I loved seeing Batman as a detective and actually getting it right once he put all the clues together. And in Batman Year 3, I liked that the story was about the guy who killed Dick Grayson's parents being up for parole. They never show you who it is that comes every year and talks at his parole hearing. Is it Bruce Wayne? It's not Bruce Wayne. Is it Alfred? Or I have to read more? You need to read more. Jerks. Okay, because I was kind of like, he, he was bald, so I was kind of like, is that Alfred? But I wasn't sure, so then you guys aren't going to tell me. You can tell me off air, please, so you'll quit bothering me. Um, I'm going to give it a four and a half. Or I just really, read it. I, sh- <laughs> I don't have any more of the issues. I'm going to give this one a four and a half. I dug it. I was like, this is so good. It's a mystery. It's trying to figure out who did it, and I don't want to give away who did it. That's the story about them killing off. Bruce Wayne's teachers, right? Teachers, yeah. yeah. All of his trainers. All right, moving on. Like, so, why did that get brought up? Oh, oh wait, I gave you. Two you days. gave me. You gave me too many books. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'll read this one too. It looks pretty good. All right, the next one I read was Chrononauts, Future Shock Number One by Image. I normally don't like time travel books, but I really dug this one because it was a reverse. They're trying to go forward in time, not backward in time. And the whole story is basically about them trying to successfully go forward in time. So I dug it. It was really good. So basically it chronicles two of the top scientists and they they go backwards in time and they get stuck. And they build a time machine out of the parts that they have. So it was kind of like Back to the Future Part 3 where they're in the Old West and they had to cobble together some way to get it the time machine to work. And then at the end of the book, they figure it out and they go into the future. And their teacher has been stopping them at every turn. Every time they do a test, it costs like $10 million to do. And the guy who t- taught them everything that they that he knows is the guy who's putting a stop on, he knows on time travel, he puts a stop on it so it fails. And each time it's costing more and more money and finally, at the end, he lets them come through because one of them figures out what the hell's going on, and they go forward in time, and he's like, welcome. It's a pretty good book. I didn't know what to expect when I picked it up. Yeah. I gave it a four. I think that's the second series, isn't it? I don't have any idea. What number is it? Number one? Yeah, it's the second series. There's a first series, too. Was it? There's always a first series. <laughs> always a first series with you. Well, Mark no, I'm Miller. just kidding. I'm just kidding. And then the last book I have is Silver Surfer Black number five. Ah, I've read it yet. Oh. That's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> he wins. <laughs> Do you know how he becomes? No. Well, I'll just give you a hint. No, it's fine. Go ahead. No, he doesn't. You he doesn't be he doesn't have a symbiote. Oh, he is a symbiote. So what happens is he's talking. He's going through this like jigsaw. He's like being pulled apart. And then he's brought back together and he's realizing he's going to have to fight Null. And it's going to take every ounce of energy for him to kill or to defeat Null. Not kill him, just defeat him and send him away for a while. So he calls his board and his board turns into a sword. He turns his board into a sword. And he's battling Null and Null is just like, give up, you can't win. And one of the coolest splash pages right here. He uses his power cosmic to repel Null, and he ends up, his power is spread across the universe, and it it brings rebirth to many different worlds, and then he is reformed, except 
this time he's not the Silver Surfer that we know. He's all black. So ACD starts C started playing in your head, didn't it? Yeah, he's back, back in, in black. he's back in black. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to give too much away because Nick hasn't read it. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have told but, you about the ACDC thing. But no, it's fine. That's why it, I was reading. It was a perfect. It it started out. We were worried what was going to happen, and then it got really good, and it finished off strong. Uh, for the whole series, I gotta not. I gotta take off a little bit for the first part, so I'll give it a four and a half. I can't give it a five because of, there were some parts that that drug. But yeah, that was a really good conclusion to that book. And I hope you get to read it soon, Nick, and everybody out there. Cool. Yeah. All right. So I did for nostalgia reasons. Because you're what? Twelve. <laughs> almost fourteen. Yeah. All right. You're you're almost fourteen because you've had so much nostalgia in your life. This is one of the first ones I ever got them. True. Okay. I'm just picking. I'm just playing. Tiny Titans number fifty. Not to be confused with Teen Titans. It was good. It's just how I remembered it. The the usual just comedy, or should I say, quote, comedy. He was doing air quotes, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> just so you know at home, he was doing air quotes when he said comedy. But yeah, it's just Beast Boy, of course, has a crush on Tara, throws a rock at him. Wait, so Beast Boy throws a rock at Tara? No, Tara throws a rock, rock at, at Beast Boy. Pronouns, Beast Boy. pal. <laughs> okay, Vince. <laughs> so then tries to become Superboy to impress Terra, of course. And then there's a couple like mini comics and then the next thing you know, Beast Boy's on a giant firework trying to fly. So then they launch it and he flies right into Kent Farm, which then he meets the real Superman, takes him back, and then all the Titans meet Superman. And then Superman calls for Jimmy Olsen, and they all take a group photo. That's Selfie. It. <laughs> it was pretty good. What'd you like about it? The humor. It was just, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't the best humor, but for, of course, an immature 14-year-old, it was funny. <laughs> okay, nice. <laughs> and uh, from an immature 14-year-old's perspective, what didn't you like? I didn't really have any dislikes. Oh, cool. None? No. Okay. That's Franco that did that, right? Yeah. What well, what would you rate it? Four stars. But there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just playing. <laughs> Four stars is fine. Was that all you had? That was it, yes. Cool. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> so I bought a horrible book. <laughs> and I couldn't finish it. The Prelude to Death Watch 2000, Hybrids number zero from Continuity Comics. I got it for a dollar, and it's signed by the artist. So I was like, sweet, I'm going to read this. No, I'm never going to read that. I'm probably going to sell it back. So don't ever read those. Those are horrible. So what I did was I dug out some books that I really like. The IDW Ghostbusters Series 1. By, uh, Burnham I'd and buy Shoning. that for a dollar. Okay, by Burnham and Shoning. <laughs> this book is awesome. They got the characters right. They got their voices right. They got the art style down. They got the humor down. They got... You know, just how that you can read and you can hear Peter's voice, or you can hear Dan Aykroyd's voice, or you can hear Egon, and you can hear Winston, and it's perfect. Something's going on, and so their proton packs aren't having the same effect on the ghosts as they used to be. So they have to figure out what's making the ghosts more powerful. Other than that, go read it yourself. I love it. That cover of the one with Slimer's on, the Slimer on it is awesome. I thought that looked familiar. I, yeah, I got that one. I love yeah. it. These are amazing. They're great. Okay. I, I'm like, is that a new one? Because I thought I saw a new one was coming out. But yeah. Oh, yeah, those are fantastic. So I'm going to probably pick out the rep of the graphic novels for these. Mm -hmm. Just to have them. <gasps> yeah. Even the giant omnibuses. I'm just going to pick those up. Yeah. They're, I should have bought it back in 2015. Now it's like 350 bucks. Ouch. So I'm just going to buy the hardcovers. Yeah. But yeah, if you guys can go out and find these. And you're a fan of the Ghostbusters. This is this is the book. Even if you're not, it's still amazing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, five. Five. So All right. They they did such a great job. He went he went from a one to a five. I confirm that's a five dollar book or five dollar book. A that's five dollar book, huh? That's a five dollar book. I no, buy that, that for that five dollars. Five rating. All right. Enjoy that. Uh, Death Watch Prelude 2000 hybrids. We got a deal. 
Yeah. That's fantastic. I want 50 cents more because I had to hold on to it and read it. No, I'm just kidding. Ryan yeah. just bought it for a dollar. <laughs> hey, man. That's a bargain. It's an autograph. By the colorist. Actually, that's the artist. Is it the artist? Yeah. You told me it was the colorist on Thursday. The foil cover alone makes it worth... Nothing. Ten cents. <laughs> um, I probably overpaid there, but, you know, that's all right. <laughs> it's Peter Stone. He wrote it. He wrote it. Okay. Ooh. He's right. the author. So. There you go, buddy. Yes. Enjoy that. Let's sing something when you come to a podcast and leave with more comics than you came in with. All right. <laughs> I did a couple of them. I've got Destroyer Duck, number one, the Special Lawsuit Benefit Edition for the little guy. So a few months back, we did, I, I talked about Savage Dragon, Destroyer Duck, and how Savage Dragon, or Destroyer Duck is the guy, the guy that created Destroyer Duck also created Howard the Duck, and he created Destroyer Duck because Marvel wouldn't let him have the rights to Howard. So this he kind of did a knockoff of his own thing. And somehow Howard ended up in this fake universe. Blah, 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 blah. Anyhow. So he created Destroyer Duck. It went like seven or eight issues. Okay, it starts off with Duke in the bar talking to his best pal, the little guy. That's the name of his best pal, the little guy. There's actually a lawsuit memorandum in the opening page about how they're suing for the little guy. Anyhow, um, so Duke, Destroyer Duck, is in a bar. Little guy disappears, and he's like, I just lost my best pal. I mean, like, he just poofed, gone. Um, so he's back at his apartment, kind of chilling out, and he starts having flashbacks of when he was in this war, and he was fighting. And so he's got all these, you know, he's a good mercenary, he went to school, he graduated, all this jazz. And all of a sudden, the little guy comes walking into his apartment years later, and he's like, these pink-skinned animals took me, and they abused me, and I barely escaped with my life. So Destroyer Duck decided he's going to go after this corporation that did this to him, the God Corp Corporation, and he jumps in this ship, travels to our solar system, to Earth, to take on God Corp, and the owner of God Corp flies around on a floating couch. This this is just off-the-wall stuff here. And Destroyer Goes in there, starts fighting with, with the guy on the floating couch. He gets captured. They pluck him. So now he's in boxer shorts, laying on this device. He Apparently his teeth, who knew Tux had teeth, um, were strong enough to break the binds that were holding him. He grabs the owner of God Corp, throws him under this press that was about to smash him, and kills the owner of God Corp. All of God Corp has now hired all these mercenaries to go chasing down Destroyer Duck. And that's where the book goes. Him fighting all these mercenaries that show up. If you want a good Howard the Duck knockoff for $5 or less, Destroyer Duck. If you can find it. If you can find it, yeah. I, I was lucky I found the whole run for and I got it for like 15 bucks. But yeah, it is by Eclipse Comics and those Eclipse books tend to be a little bit harder to find. All right, next one. Is something to ki- that something is killing the children? Issue two by Aftershock. Wrong. Boom oh. Studios. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Sorry, you're the Aftershock guy, so I figured it would be Aftershock. Oh, I had to build that one up for a while for that to work. Okay, so jerk. I read the first one. I'm like, you know what? I want to review this. I'm like, you know what? I'm I am going to hold off though. I want to see what the second one's like. So, this is kind of like Stranger Things. It starts off with some kids uh, hanging out, and they go out into the... They, they're playing, um, like, a truth or dare or something. And they go out into the woods, and one of the kids comes back out, and all his friends are dead. And something is, obviously, killing the children. In the meantime, this lady shows up, and she's battling this monster. She defeats this monster. And then she gets paged and told she needs to go to the town where this kid was at because kids are missing there. So he, she goes to that town to take on this next monster. So she's kind of like a monster hunter. This part two, and that's what this one is, is kind of getting into one of the kids' brothers is working at like a village inn or an Applebee's or something. Trademarked, obviously. So they named it Apple Bee. Or Apple Dumpling. Took the S off of it or something. And... 
he you can see that there's monsters like following him around but he can't see them that whole inner uh view or whatever and the girl decides that oh it's apple beams excuse me the monster hunter that's coming to town decides she's going to set up shop at apple beams and pays the brother 20 bucks to let her have a booth and sit in apple beams because she knows they're all going to go out of business anyhow so what's the point of you know they're not going to be real busy then she kind of has a flashback where she's destroying monsters the brother figures out that she's got probably has something to do with it and kicks her out of the restaurant she goes checks in the motel and she starts talking to a stuffed platypus and the sheriff shows up because he heard about what happened at apple beams and starts asking her questions and when she opens the door the octopus has a ghost hanging over it of a little kid with uh octopus tentacles uh staring back at the sheriff and she's like what's the problem james tinian the fourth i'm sorry if i said his name wrong writes some of the most amazing stuff you'll ever read it, he's one of those authors that when he writes something i'm picking it up especially if it's not a mainstream book so definitely 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 check this out it's only two issues in so far it's going to be really good i promise okay before I get to my last one, I wanted to take one brief second to talk about the final issue of Deceased, DC East book. I stopped reading after number one. The only reason I'm bringing it up... Everybody's dead. I don't want to give anything away. However, I will say this. If you read out, stopped reading after number one, I'm going to give you the only other highlight of the whole series I'm right now. Gonna, I'm not going to pick it up, so go <laughs> for it. So, in the first one, Batman is bitten, he dies, and Damien takes over the mantle. And so all the superheroes, including Green Lantern, Black Canary. Yes, I said that as one word because that's the Green Lantern now. It is Black Canary. Yes. Green Canary. Green, Green Canary. Canary. Yes. <laughs> it, anyhow. Um, nice. And Damien shows up and he goes, my dad prepared for, uh, because Superman's now infected. He's like, well, my dad came up with a plan to take out Superman. And one of them is like, yeah, he came up with a plan to take out everybody. And Oliver Queen goes, yeah, we always knew he did. And he's, I knew he had a plan for to take out every single one of his friends. And Damien's like, actually, he did not have a plan for you. And Oliver's like, so you're saying that I couldn't take over the world? <laughs> Fantastic line. I, Ouch. <laughs> Damn. And then a little bit later, he does a shot and kills an infected Aquaman. And he goes... See, I could take over the world. I just shot this from so many miles away in the rain with the wind blowing the wrong direction. And, like, the only highlight of that whole series for me was <laughs> just that little piece. Just the diss on Green Arrow. <laughs> just the diss on Green Arrow. All, All right. right. Final read was by Image Comics, and it was a trade of Assassin Nation. Two words. Number one with a bullet. My daughter had a baton competition on Saturday. At Ralston High School here in Omaha. How long did it take you to read that? Not long. But it's because I couldn't stop reading it. It was not long enough. It was yeah, it was to, a... It was supposed to take you the whole weekend, and you read it in like 20 minutes, didn't you? Yeah. I, I, I just... It was amazing. I can't recommend this book enough. So, the first concerning piece to me was I opened up the front panel, and... It lists the na uh, according to assassin rankings worldwide. It lists the top twenty assassins, and I can't even say some of them because we're a kid friendly show. And I'm like, oh great, now I got to remember all these twenty assassins. And so it's about this guy. He's now a mob boss. He used to be the number one assassin, and somebody's trying to take him out and doing all these trick shots trying to get him, but always missing. So he decided the best way to stop somebody from assassinating him is to hire the top 20 assassins in the world to become his bodyguards. Fantastic. So he gets them all in one space and they start fighting and 10 of them die immediately. 10 of them kill each other. <laughs> I'm like, great. Now I only have to remember 10 of them. That's fantastic. This is, this is the best book ever. And so he tells them, okay, since you 10 survived, I do want to hire you guys to protect me. And, so they're like, okay, good deal. Um, and one of the guys is his name's Dave. That that's the assassin's name is Dave. He just wants to kind of get to know everybody, and he's like a family man, very friendly. 
And he's like, so tell me about your first hit and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I shouldn't have laughed at this, but I did. So forgive me. I know I'll go to hell for this. There is a Asian woman in here who's an assassin. And she's she's telling about her first hit. And, or no, she wasn't telling about her first hit. She was talking about how they should go in because they think they knew who's doing this. And how they should just go walk through the door and kill the guy. And they're like, well, aren't you worried about witnesses? And she's like, no. And then it's a cut scene into her head where the last witness was that saw her kill somebody said, well, she's Asian. She's from, you know, uh, China, uh, Japan or Korea. And Ouch. well, how old is she? Anywhere from uh, 15 to 500. I, I don't know. <laughs> just, I, I, I just could, I couldn't help but laugh at it. But they made her a complete just rock star in this book. As it keeps going, people, you know, the assassins group gets smaller and smaller. And there's only four of them left. And there is a plot twist, so I don't want to give everything away. Just read this. I mean, it wasn't expensive. It's 15 bucks. And they left it where it should continue. This is probably one of the best books I've read, like, from issue one to five. That's what book issues are in here. Straight, I mean, wow. It's just hilarious. It's amazing. It's violent. It's fun. So definitely check this book out. Awesome. We're going to move into the list. This week's top ten. I did it as TMNT sidekicks, side characters. Mm -hmm. So... uh at number 10, I had Screw Loose. Number 9 was Wing Nut. <laughs> number 8 was Alloplex. Number 7 was Rennet Tilly. Number 6 was Fugitoid. 5 was Venus de Milo. 4, Mondo Gecko, dude. I forgot about him. <laughs> number 3, Splinter. Number 2, April O'Neil. And of course, you cannot have a list without the badass with a hockey mask, Casey Jones. All right. So mine, I did it like yours. Um, number 10, April O'Neil. Number 9, Casey Jones. Number 8, Slash the Snapping Turtle. Number 7, Metalhead. Number 6, Kirby. Yeah. Number 5, Renette Tilly, because she was awesome. And a crazy storyline. I love that storyline. Number 4, Miyamoto Yusagi from Yusagi Yojimbo. I had him, and I couldn't remember. I forgot to put him on my list again. I erased him because I didn't think I had his name right. And I was a huge fan of the Archie comics, Ninja Turtle Adventures. So yeah. number three, Wingnut and Screwloose. They're, they're, they have to be together. Um, number two, Ray Filet, otherwise known as Man Ray. He was a giant manta ray. Yep. And number one, Cuddly Cowlick. He was a giant cow that could travel interdimensionally by... And he would pick them up with his tongue oh, and put them in his mouth. I completely and just forgot that travel dimensions and spit them out. <laughs> isn't that what came and picked us up in the the That's turtle what, show? Yeah, it was going. Yeah, yeah, I completely was going forgot to be, about yeah. Calic. So ah, <laughs> two of those on there. I wish I had. All right, ten metalhead, nine leatherhead, eight Baxter Stockman fly edition, seven whiter black man. Ray Filet, <laughs> six Dirtbag, five Rocksteady, four Bebop. I don't know why I like this. Game. Three Sergeant Bananas, two. <laughs> He's a gorilla. He was an army gorilla. Oh, was it the <laughs> toy? Was there a toy of him? There was a toy of really? him. Really? Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> two Casey Jones. And one, Miyamoto Usagi. I think I said that right. Usagi? Yeah. Yes. Yes, that is my oh, list. I completely forgot about you. I'm so upset. <laughs> it's okay. Redo it. Redo your list. No, it's okay. <laughs> Landon, who's your number one? I gotta go speed up. Sorry, we woke him up. Irma. <laughs> you gotta have Irma on there somewhere. All right. Anybody else have anything this week? No, I didn't have time to write anything down. Okay. Are you going to say it? What? Because Nick didn't say it. I figured you'd say it. What's up? HBO Max. Oh, 
the Green Lantern. I'm going to have to wait for DVD. I'm, yeah, so am I. I'm going to have to wait for DVD, too. I'm going to wait to see what character they pick. It sounds like it's supposed to be the core. Yeah. But which one are they going to focus on? I'm going to bet it's somebody that they just killed off in Justice League Odyssey. Yeah, it could be. Yep. could be. And then they could do Simon BS. Mm-hmm. They could do John Stewart. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cat Matui. Um, I mean, if you're going diversity, that's the group to do it with. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, other little comment about Deceased. It's hilarious. Sorry. Because we were talking about this. Callback. Callback, yes. <laughs> Guy Gardner actually admits. He's like, somebody told him to shut up and goes, am I just doing this to protect myself from being found out that I really am scared to death of what's actually happening? And blah, blah, blah. I mean, he just lays it out all on the line. He's like, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sorry. Um <laughs> No 30-minute wrestling tirade this time, Landon. <laughs> Landon, you got anything, bud? Nope. Nothing? Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm trying to think if I have anything. Watch NXT, not Dynamite. That's my take. All right. All right. Anyway. Cool. Is that it? <laughs> That's it. That's All it. right. Have fun. Read more comics. It's been Kirk. Brian. Landon. And Nick. See you guys. Leven is een berg van storm hier in de stad. Auto's, lasers, vliegmachines, bliksems, het is wat. Kappere helden trekken te verder in. Dat is Iedere keer beleef je meer in. Dat is Alles wat je droomt gebeurt in. Dat is Soms word je in het nauw gedreven, moet je rennen voor je leven. Hou je dan maar stevig vast aan dat deels. Oeh.